from being a defining martial arts film to enjoying a long-running successful franchise. The Karate Kid is perhaps the most important film of the genre of all time. And here's what you should know about its inspirational story. Before Jaden Smith and Jackie Chan's Karate Kid, there was The Karate Kid, a cult classic, a symbol of pop culture, and a movie that paved the way for a whole franchise. Oh, Mr. Miyagi, I forgot to give this back to you last night. Uh, you keep. Oh, thanks a lot. Sir, ready? Well, yeah, I guess so. And your son must talk. And of course, there are haters and supporters. Some may disagree and say that the movie had nothing to do with actual martial arts or didn't represent the genre like a typical Jackie Chan movie. But even with all the hate, the movie hit a milestone when it came to connecting with the general audience. The Karate Kid was probably the first movie where people like you and I could imagine that, yeah, we can also learn martial arts if we were being bullied. God, how did that happen? Huh? What happened? I hit a curb with my bike and then it hit me. I wore the glasses because I didn't want you to worry. <laughs> Not that kids these days are that hardworking, but still, the charm of the underdog working to fight his nemesis never gets old. And that's what the Karate Kid had to offer, with countless movies dedicated to the underdog or the loser. Are you? Have a nice trip. Karate Kid was something the younger audience could relate to, and I don't blame anyone who watches the movie in 2023 to have a great laugh. I mean, the bad montage, the basic karate, and the awful music would make the movie look like a spoof compared to today's cinema. But it was a product of the 80s, guys. And the movie earned a lot more meaning after people learned that it was somewhat based on true events. Hey, Allie with an eye. How you doing? Good. Not too hungry today. No, not really. Yeah, I have some pie. I made it myself. Yeah. <laughs> this should not come as a surprise because the director behind Rocky was also behind the Karate Kid movies. So we kind of get where the inspiration comes from. A 17-year-old Daniel moves from New Jersey to LA and it doesn't take him long to stand out in a bad way and make enemies with a black belt at a dojo. Johnny Lawrence is your typical bully with an ex-girlfriend who has a thing for the new kid. The thugs from the Cobra Kai dojo obviously teach Daniel a lesson and taking direct hits on the face inspired Daniel to fight back. He learns that there's a handyman in his apartment building who gives a about martial arts. Thus, our hero meets Mr. Miyagi, and he agrees to train him in real martial arts. Mr. Miyagi, I'm beating my shoulders. Good. Go home, get to rest. Come morning, start early, six o'clock. Then we get some inspirational montages and boom, Daniel is at this karate tournament against his high school bully and gives him the brutal crane kick. And that's how you start a successful sports franchise. The story isn't too far-fetched and it could have happened to anyone. Turns out it happened to Robert Mark Kamen, the creator of the Karate Kid franchise. Much of the movie is based on Robert's own life experiences as he was only 17 years old when he was beaten up at the 1964 New York World World's Fair by a bunch of bullies. The rest is inspired by a newspaper article about a kid from San Fernando Valley. Producer Jerry Weintraub came across the article in which a kid learned karate to fight off bullies, and the concept of denying vengeful teaching also came from Robert. When the creator of the Karate Kid movies was bullied by a bunch of good-for-nothing kids, Robert thought of taking up karate to defend himself, but he was highly unsatisfied with his first tutor's way of teaching, which was more about taking revenge than self-defense or discipline. Heyman eventually found a master worth following in the form of an Okinawa sensei named Mei Taiku Yagi. But the surprising thing is that Kamen sensei actually stuttered under Chojin Miyagi. Mr. Miyagi's character is the culmination of the mentorship Robert found. On the other hand, other characters in the movie were also inspired by Kamen's various encounters. Kreese's character was also inspired by two people Robert met along the way. One was the badass sensei who wanted kids to injure each other in the name of revenge. 
coach, while the other was a Marine veteran sensei. So, it makes the Karate Kid all the more appreciable in the genre, knowing that it stemmed from reality. And that's considering when the movie came out. It completely changed America's views about martial arts. The movie was the reason for the sports boost in the country. People immediately ran to the dojos, thinking the next movie would be about them. And of course, to fend off bullies, too. The Karate Kid had a deep impact on pop culture, as the viewers considered it the pinnacle of an enjoyable way to see teenagers beat the out of each other. I also have to thank Robert for changing the franchise's name. Only God knows how we would feel about the franchise if it was named The Karate Kid Project. The casting also played a defining role in the movie's success. They say a movie is only as good as its actors, but can you imagine Tom Cruise playing Iron Man? I know the guy's good, but sometimes an actor just clicks with the concept, right? There's no possible replacement for Pat Morita, who played the iconic Japanese karate mentor, and actor Ralph Macchio, who despite being 22 at the time, played Daniel brilliantly, though Morita wasn't the movie maker's first choice. But his perfection is unquestionable. He was so good that it even landed him an Oscar nod for Best Supporting Actor. It was director John G. Avildsen who was convinced that funny man Morita was perfect for the job. As for Macchio, he was just the right amount of obnoxious and young steam that Robert needed. He had the perfect face to represent the new kid on the block. And that's how we got the iconic duo that became became the face of the franchise. It's fortunate that the franchise lived on in the shape of Cobra Kai. A big shout out to the Netflix series Cobra Kai for keeping the Karate Kid saga alive. The streaming platform found a gold mine in the classic franchise, and the key was to stay true to the roots. Cobra Kai takes place 34 years after the events of the 1984 All Valley Karate Tournament. The famous rivals meet face to face once more, as William Zabka's Johnny seeks redemption by opening the Cobra Kai Do. The Netflix show has plenty of the original cast and references to keep the Karate Kid spirit alive. It was unfortunate that Morita died in 2005, else Mr. Miyagi would have continued to be that ultimate sensei figure for the new cast. Cobra Kai has been inspirational in doing justice to Miyagi's teachings and the impact it had on Daniel's life. And though the entire franchise is based on the famous training trope, I can't deny that it changed the way the public perceived kung fu movies. Before the Karate Kid, kung fu movies stared stereotyped to Asian actors acting like Tekken characters. The whole martial art training art, when applied to a kid from New Jersey, took everyone by surprise. And that's when it was realized that the Karate Kid would forever be a part of popular pop culture references. Of course, movies back then were too over the top, but Cobra Kai corrected that mistake. It took the classic movie's popularity to new heights by adding a certain elegance. There are no repetitive training montages. Rather, it tried to correct the inaccuracies related to martial arts. We all know that the Karate Kid's martial arts were kind of bad, and it's too ironic. The whole thing with Daniel going from zero to hero in such a short time was surreal too. But that's exactly what connected with the audience. The Karate Kid became every street boy's motivation for finding the passion for doing something, even if they're completely new to it. You don't need to be born in a dojo to learn martial arts. And that's how one guy's real life experiences redefine the martial arts trope into a successful movie franchise. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Daniel son, you too much myself, not too good. Not by myself.